And someone, well, all the top 16 players would count that shot. It's probably 9 out of 10. Probably expect to get it 10 out of 10, but it's probably a 9 out of 10 shot. They cured it beautifully. Second John, please. Yeah, I'm has just asking for a second again because the uh, pink spot's occupied. Big advantage here with the Annie as well. He's about six foot four, so he can reach over without any problem. But I'll we'll show you what he was looking at from John's perspective. Thank you. As you come down, you can see just slightly and that's where he hit it to keep that white in more or less the same position yeah it's interesting he had the ball in hand but he just lined it up just a touch off straight most people at home would say well, why not line it up straight that's surely that's easier but most professionals would just leave just a touch of angle eight <coughs> Maybe a change 13. of plan here. He's just hampered himself slightly for the red next to the black, but he had the alternate red for the middle. He played for that one next to the black, but uh, shouldn't be a problem. So he's potted everything he's gone for at the moment. 32 pots without a miss. I was just 14. thinking, Dennis, Steve Davis is doing a master class. Maybe we should get that long straight red out from. <laughs> Dear me. Uh, that, that would put him under pressure, Stephen. Staying on the right. blue, and he will do again, but if he can get a good angle on the blue this time, he'll maybe play for that red next to the black. Oh, he's gone too far right. this time, so slight change of plan. He can still play for the one to the left of the pink and reds. Just get into that too well. Should have been on a nice easy blue for the left middle pocket, but slight change of plan again. Might be able to get up on that red I mentioned. He's got the one on the right side of the table as well, and that'll do very yeah. nicely. That's about perfect. 22. And John Parrott mentioned in the studio about having the cue ball on a sixpence. And that's a typical example there. He had that white exactly where he wanted. Twenty-three. So finally, he's on the black in a way that he can play for the red beside it. Thirty. Well, no doubt be going into the pack after the next black, and just just checking to see if there was a plant to the right centre there. Thirty-one. So we just just above centre the cue ball. I'm going to touch a right hand side here. Try to hit the main bunch. He's done nothing, he's a bit unlucky. 38. Yeah, he couldn't have played it much better. He played it as you called it, Stephen, and uh, a little unfortunate. He can't quite get to the potting angle of that one. And the one he's looking at in the middle is quite tight also, the one to the right middle. In fact, it's so tight he's having a look at it from both sides, but... Hmm. 
Might be able to get to that. In fact, if he does get it, he'll be back on the black. Forty-six. Just comes slightly awkward on this red to the right centre. I'm raising the cue, but in the air. Forty-seven. That's excellent. <laughs> this is very impressive from John Higgins so far. This is as good as snooker can be played. It's going to be a little bit careful with this one here. 46. It's just slipped away slightly. What was the problem with that uh, cannon there? 54. You wanted a thicker contact on the red and it would have kept the white in amongst the red. So. Just a medium distance pot required, but yeah, so far it's been vintage, John Higgins. If this goes in, he'll take the second frame because he'll be on the black. But it's awkward when you're using an extension. There's so much cue between your bridge hand and the white. Five. Been off the jaw that time, but it's in the pocket. Well, this takes me back to when I used to pop up dispensers to have a little practice, and you'd be playing John. 62. And uh, John Higgins got to be world number one and world champion within six years, which was some achievement. And a lot of that credit, and John would 63. tell you, was down to practicing with Stephen Hendry. That's 47 pots out of 47 so far. Frames you did play 70. against John, eh? Be in the thousands, I would imagine, Stephen. Yeah, most days. 71. We'd maybe put in a couple of hours on our own in the morning, have a bit of lunch, and then have three or four hours in the afternoon. That seen from very early on. He was always going to be one of the best players in the world. Yeah. 78. Well, that's amazing. Mark Allen has missed one pot. He missed that easy black and he's been sat in his seat ever since. John Higgins has been immaculate. And if he... 79. Start with back-to-back -back centuries. Hmm, I'm not sure how many times that would have happened in the Masters, the start of a match. Look at the side he had on that right-hand side to swing it around the angles. 85. You know, this has come from, we had a re-rack in the first frame, which looked like it was going to be scrappy. John had missed a red into the middle. 86. But we started again. And he's never looked back. 93.
94. Well, this is absolutely brilliant from John Higgins. It really is. Here's another century for you. One. And a terrific round of applause for his second century. Can't play any better than this. Thanks, Jim. One hundred and two. One hundred and five. One hundred and seven. Dennis, when Mark Allen missed that easy black in the last frame, I didn't think he'd be sat down for the next two frames. One hundred and ten. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Mark knows what John's capable of, but I don't think he was expecting uh, Jonathan throw this sort of snooker at him. But it can turn around. And if Mark gets his chance, he's quite capable of doing the same thing. But at the moment, it's all the Scott. 119. 125. It just doesn't get any better than this. John Higgins has been immaculate in the two opening frames. Back-to-back -back centuries, and he leads 2-0.